Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Rare Book Room. My name is Robin, and I help direct the events here at the Strand. For a little bit of history, Strand was founded in 1927 by the Bass family over on 4th Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled until, after over 92 years, Strand is the sole survivor. Still run by the Bass family, running 400 events a year, and still housing new and used books. Tonight, I'm honored to present, along with NYU's Center for Ballet and the Arts, a celebration of Out Loud, the big-hearted and outspoken story of a man as formidable on the page as he is on the boards. Here with us tonight is the man himself, Mark Morris, named by the New York Times as the most successful and influential choreographer of all alive, founder of the Mark Morris Dance Group, founder of the Mark Morris Dance Group and the White Oak Dance Project. Uh, joining him to discuss out loud is Wendy Lesser, founding and current editor of the Three Penny Review, author of 11 nonfiction books and one novel, as well as a fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences and of the New York Institute for the Humanities. Please join me in welcoming them and out loud to the Strand. Are they on already? Yes, good. I'm a technological idiot, so I wouldn't be able to turn it on if it wasn't already on. That's reassuring. You <laughs> <laughs> put these here. Go ahead, Wendy. You're going to wander around? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down in a second. <laughs> All right. I was looking at rare books. I don't know why. <laughs> so I thought I'd start by asking why someone who actually can write himself. He's written several pieces for the Three Penny Review. He does all his own program notes. Why did you decide to have... Oh, that's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you decide to have a co-author? Because I'm not a writer. Um, actually, I have some... I discovered a sheaf of, of ancient haiku of mine that Are I you found. Are you offering them, them to me? To yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> for your, yeah, for your publication. <laughs> So you do poets, you know. Yeah, Come on. we do. They're right. short. Uh, anyway, um, because I'm not a writer, I just write. And that's one way I'm different from a lot of writers. Like, I'm different from a lot of choreographers because I make up dances. I see. You know, so, um, <laughs> so um, the, it, because, you know, things have been written about me, the wonderful book by Joan Coachella called Mark Morris, and um, a couple of other things. One by Stephanie Jordan, which is about me versus music. Yeah. That's a fabulous book that a lot of people can't read because it's highfalutin academic language or something. Um, it's great. Uh, and then there's a sort of a, can I say coffee table? Is that a bad thing to say? There's a coffee table-ish book about L'Allegro. I'm in it. Fabulous. I know that one. <laughs> oh, you're in it? You wrote that? No, I, I wrote one essay. On okay, it. all right. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, so though, and it was about time because the the book that Joan wrote stops like the day I get back from Brussels, move back to New York, and that was like thirty something years. It's a sh really long time. <laughs> and so, um, should I just go on with this? Well, how I encountered West States yeah, or do, something? What do you want? Tell us how you met your co-author. Okay. <laughs> What year was the, that year at the New York Public Library where it was like 100 years or 1,000 a, a years of the New York Public Library? A few years Something ago. Something like 2013, 2014, that long that's ago? That's probably right, yeah. yeah. Um, I was at this gigantic party because I was celebrity enough where I was asked to comment about a particular writer and or book and I just did a little thing on Gertrude Stein who I worship and actually have read <laughs> not Proust but all of Gertrude Stein I've read and um, we were seated um, in one of the gorgeous reading rooms where you wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't allow you to like sneeze and there was this huge dinner. It was crazy, like all of these priceless books, not unlike here. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a giant, it was, it was probably like a 1500 person party. Every room, it was so glamorous and so fabulous. And I was across from these two strangers. I was with my friend Marjorie Folkman who danced with me, he was wonderful. And Wes was across the table and um, his wife, Abby, oh wait a minute, she was pregnant and the son is 
Okay, never mind. This is how to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I thought that would work. Right. Um, it didn't. <laughs> so anyway, we sort of, we hit it off. We were, you know, we t- both of us never stopped talking. Or that, neither that of us. That fun. <laughs> neither one of us ever stopped talking. <laughs> and our dates did the same thing, but we were louder. Uh-huh. And uh, we, I'd never heard of him as a singer, songwriter, as John Wesley Harding, which was his uh, nom de disque. And uh, I'd never read any of his books. So I immediately... Uh, listened to some of the music, which I liked okay, it's not my f- thing, but the books made me crazy. The first one, Misfortune, that yeah. I, I mean, I think the they're novels wonderful. are terrific. They're great. Yeah. So I thought, oh, he can write. He doesn't know anything about dancing, which, which is was a great. Plus. Oh my God, I know, because everybody's, if you know anything, then you're an expert, and there's only about 15 of them <laughs> anyway. So um, we like had dinner. I forget what happened. We had a couple of dates. I told some of my incredibly fascinating stories, <laughs> and he was. We were smitten one with the other. And did was it his idea to do the book or your idea? His, his idea. Nancy and I had taught this. Nancy Umanoff, uh, executive director of Mark Morris Dance Group, who's in Nancy, here somewhere, right here. Um, <laughs> we'd been talking about like it's time for another book, because you know time's a waste, and it had been thirty years, and I'm, you know, you know, I why not? A lot of things had happened, and uh, including like my dance center in Brooklyn, and all of this stuff had had happened, and we were pretty successful. And that was a half a career ago, pretty much. So um, it it came to pass that Wes proposed a book. It's like, tell me, let's have some of your stories. And so that's what we did. That was the start of that. And I see that it's officially called a memoir, and that's what Wes was calling it. Why did you choose that as opposed to autobiography? Or do you have a? Then I would have written it. I see. It has to be literally auto if it's yours. Thank you for using the word literally (laughs) correctly. Um, Yeah, I have an issue with literally. Uh, No, um, yeah, it's it's not exactly as told to, which it kind of is, but it was... I think, having never done this before, and neither had Wes, really. He's, he doesn't, and he, he says he's never going to do no, it again. No, there's no reason to. <laughs> um, that doesn't mean it was a bad experience. No, not at all. It means you're the only person he would do this with. <laughs> right. True, I guess. I don't know. Neither. We didn't know that was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so it, what happened when it happened was we got together many, many times for many, many hours over a couple of years, and it was really actually and truly collaborative. Neither one of us is a super uh, enthusiastic collaborator because we're right and smart. We're both right all the time and super smart even more of the time. So it's like, (laughs) fine. You know, got, uh, got it, got it, yeah. got it, got it. You know, people say got it, got like, shut up. That's what that means. So we spoke simultaneously for hours and hours, and somehow uh, I ended up on the, in the transcription. He taped your part yeah. of it. Yeah. Right. right. So he taped the whole thing, and he did, he transcribed everything, because he can do, he can do a, like a computer and a keyboard, and I, I don't do that, and I don't write. So he would do that, go away some months or weeks or whatever later, he'd come back, he would send me the transcription cleaned up, although I don't really hem and haw a lot. Mm -hmm. Uh, Although I do use the word thrilling a lot, but I took some of those out of the book. Um, And so he would send those, I would read it, and then I'd read it out loud with him in the room. And we edited it on the spot, like this is so boring. Is that how you came up with the title? Stupid, I came up with the title. Um, But we, we worked exactly like that for the whole time. And so he would go away and I would go away on tour. He's touring and I would get a new draft of something. Um, and then, you know, we figured out the, the chronology and the sort of the boringest step, uh, the boringest stories we either left in or took out. <laughs> and the ti- the original working title from, well, from me, from as a, t- like maybe a 20 year old, for some reason I was imagining the vastness of, God. So I thought that when I went to heaven, this when you is were 20, pretend. You something, yeah. I didn't really think it. It's pretend, but, you know, like God and heaven. But I, I thought that I would be so moved by the vastness of 
the sort of the corporeal heavenly God that I would only be able to see up to her knees. <laughs> and so my original idea, and this is true from long ago, you know, everybody has a this name. This is not in the book at no, all. No, I've done, what, you Lots want me to read the book? Lots of great stories are in the book, not in the yeah, book. Yeah, but not this one, <laughs> yeah, so okay. hold on, I'm not done with that, it gets better. <laughs> so, you know, everybody has a title for a book. A friend of mine spent a lot, a lot of her life waiting for men, is proposing a book called Waiting for Men. <laughs> uh, it's a, a woman is uh, the author yeah. um, and the, the may be the author and anyway so I was going to call my book God's Pantyhose <laughs> because I thought that's all I could see uh-huh. and it you know it doesn't make a it's it's not great, I but think it's kind of good. Except time. there was a better one before that, <laughs> that uh, Wes being English didn't understand the vulgarity. The title I proposed was, Are You In Yet? <laughs> <laughs> he thought I meant in vogue or in fashion. <laughs> right. and you he didn't know I was talking about anal penetration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, Wendy, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, was there anything that came up in these transcripts between you that got cut out that you regret that is not in here? Probably. You can't think what I it would can't, be? I'm not sure if I can really remember some stuff. Mostly it was just that the, the brilliant, fascinating stories were a little bit longer and had more stuff in them. But then, you know, as you know, as a writer yourself, that it's like, oh, gee, that was a really bad idea, that thing. So you get rid of it. Cutting. Right? Cutting yeah. is the brilliant tool of writing. Yeah. 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 What's amazing about the book is that it sounds like you. I mean, when I knew that he was going to be doing this with you, I, and he has a very strong authorial voice. We've known each other for many years. Yeah. Oh, you and I. True. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so when I heard that you had found this guy to collaborate with, and I had read his novels, and I thought, how is that going to work? I was amazed at the degree to which he had been able to submerge himself so that your voice came through completely. That's terrific. And the other thing that amazed me, because I have tried over the years, over the decades, to get you to talk in private and in public about what goes into the dances with zero success, zero success in getting you on that subject. Zero, I don't know, okay. <laughs> but I think he got you to talk about what was, I don't know if it was in your mind, but what, was, what were your various conscious intentions and ideas and feelings about the music and all those things to me, you know, other people will buy this book for the sex scenes. There's lots of great sex. There's lots of great gossip. There's all sorts of things about the dance world that are fun and people will want. But for me, the heart of the book is these incredible discussions of great dance works that I've seen over and over. So I've seen them enough so that when I read Mark talking about what went into them, it's miraculous. I don't know another book by an artist that describes in such detail what went into particular works of art. I have to tell you that's so, that was so surprising. You said that, a couple other people who read it in Galley said that. And then sort of the equal number said, why don't you write about your process at all? It's only about your life. And then- They missed those it's, parts. Yeah, I know, it's like, and I, it was probably because he didn't know shit about dance. And so he would say, like, well, of course, you know, I'm a singer, songwriter, a writer. It must be like this. Like, no, you're completely off. It's more like this. And then I would go on and on and on and on. Uh, so, so he captured all that. Yeah, yeah, he did. But it was also to, dis- to organize the book with um, dances, pieces of choreography from around the period that they're about or when they were set. Mm-hmm. So that decided the, the title chapters are dances pretty much, that come from a particular place or a time or both. And that's one way that the, or- the book was organized. So that dumped several of the fascinating dance uh, examination stories a little right. bit. But, th- but it is more than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, Reading back, it's like, what? Are yeah. you, what? You know, that's a secret. <laughs> no, no, I know. I you start, gave a lot away. Because <laughs> the, pro- the, the, what do you call it in a book? Is that a prologue? The first thing yes, that happens? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I start, but it, it starts as s- several people have pointed out. It's like, I'm not going to talk about this. This is off limits. Forget it. I'm not going to say a word about it. I locked my lips and then swallowed the key, which is impossible. <laughs> and 
then the opposite <laughs> happened. And then it was like complete sort of glossolalia right from there. But the critique of process in the prologue is a good one. In other words, the idea that we should have to sit there and watch the conceptual part instead of the finished product. That, it's a, a very annoying thing about a lot of art these days. Well, as, oh, I'm glad you said the these days, because <laughs> it didn't used to be like that. It was more like a secret secret ceremony. Right. You would you know, make something up. And I'm not talking about the, the high church of early modern dance, although I am a little bit. You know, still, I don't want... I don't want people to watch rehearsal. That's what rehearsal is. So now everything, in case you haven't noticed, is fully... Like, you can't go to the theater now without somebody, like, sitting on your lap mm -hmm. who's supposed to be on stage. It's like, <laughs> no, I will not participate. I bought a ticket. You entertain me. <laughs> like, no, I could, I'd rather watch, as everybody knows... Uh, Special Victims Unit. I'd rather yeah. watch Law & Order, Colon, Special Victims Unit, Mariska Hargitay, any night I yeah. take over an, almost any performance I could go to. <laughs> Luckily, they're endless, those <laughs> Law & Orders. <laughs> they never stop. Well, it's a new season. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where her son bravely goes to ballet class. Wow, wow. And then there's also the, the Jesse Smollett uh, uh, down low scandal happening simultaneously. It's episode three. <laughs> this is getting of this us new off one. the yeah. subject. <laughs> I'm not lying about that. No, no. He's, a, he's an aficionado of a lot of other TV shows, too, but we, we'll save that for the question and answer oh, period. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that I, that I loved about the book and that I found very moving was your descriptions of. Uh, your long-term working and friend relationships with people that are in the dance group, and in particular with Nancy. I thought that, you know, Nancy, you really came out as the heroine of the book in certain ways that are wonderful because you've been working behind the scenes forever and now something tells people what you've been doing. And I thought that the that moment when you and Mortier are meeting before you move to Belgium, that is a priceless moment in the book where Nancy is Be sure and read it. Yeah, be sure and read it. Na Nancy is present at the meeting and Mortier, a European, is treating her like the secretary and you know expecting her to take notes. And Mark just interrupts the meeting and says, excuse me, Nancy is like I would be if I knew what I was doing. You know? <laughs> it's, a, it's a wonderful moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <Yes. laughs> oh, wait, I wanted to say one more thing about Wes versus my, Wes's versus my voice. Okay. Which is, there was, <laughs> there was, <laughs> it's a spy. Um, there, it's okay, it's okay. I don't, I frown on, Profile. Okay, so, all right. Um, here's what happened. I, no, it's okay, it's okay. I don't mean to spook you just slightly. Um, <laughs> here's what happened. I get, I re, I'm reading back where it says that I didn't, go to, I didn't go to college like my father wanted, or like my mother wanted, and he says, I disappointed my mom by not going to university. It's like, Wes, that is bullshit. You know, I don't even pronounce the word color with a U in it. Yeah, right. It's like, give me a, that's you. That's your story. And they're related, but I don't talk like that. I'm sorry. Yes, no, I think you. I don't use the word governor. You know what I'm saying? Did, <laughs> did he put a lot of English things in your speech? He can't help it. It's his language. Yeah. And I speak American. <laughs> right. True. Well. <laughs> A another interesting thing about the way the book turned out, because it was done essentially chronologically, so that it brought us up to the present moment at the end, was mm. the kind of mea culpa business, if you want to call it that, about the dancers uh, rebelling against your, I don't know how to put it. Uh, Tyranny? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. <laughs> and, and the idea that they actually spoke up to you and that Nancy proposed a suggestion box and that, that there was essentially a, um, a rebellion in the core and that you dealt with that. And the, and the way you de deal with it in speech here yeah. is really interesting. Did you deal with it that well directly to them, as movingly as you do here? I probably didn't say it. But sure. You didn't admit to them that you thought that they were in the right? That's, a, that's another conversation. That, the, book, the book is what we're talking about. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's an ongoing thing. And if that's, uh, we, the shorthand we use is me too. Hashtag, yeah, yeah. hashtag whatever, really, everybody on everything. And it's, I can't deny that. But it's also like, you know, I, 
I've been getting older and they've been staying the same, which you know, which is why everybody who teaches at, at, at university ends up having a bad idea affair with their students. You know, Stanley Elkin. Yeah. Who I worship. Um, so it's like, oh, gee, that's, ter- that's kind of soured. That's kind of awful. I thought I could say that or everybody would understand that or even that they would somehow understand history, mm-hmm. you know, but as you know, everybody, all young people, including me when I was young, the world ends at your birth, you know, that's, I'm, th- like, history is over, and then you're born, and then everything is brand new, it's like, yay, I love it here on <laughs> earth, <laughs> and it's like, oh, oops, I forgot there was a whole bunch of stuff before that, and you can't expect everybody to know, to, be able to, people to be able to name the Beatles. Yeah. Which they couldn't. That's ain't, no, they couldn't. Why would they? Hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> sort of shocking to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, but well, we weren't born yesterday, Wendy. <laughs> no, we weren't. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, have they all read it, your dancers? That's not my business. I wouldn't know. They were all, they were all uh, given a copy as a gift. Mm-hmm. There's a book that they're required to read when they join the company, which is called Mark Morris by Joan Acuchella. And so when I said to a recent dancer... You know, have you read that? But, you know, it, it's free. Like, it's there. You can just read it, yeah. you know? And, you know, uh, uh, I, I said to this person, have you, did you finish reading, you know, did you read the book? This is a while ago. And this person said to me, oh, um, not, you know, almost all of it. Like, or I, I didn't quite finish it. It's like, you know what that means? It means no. they're afraid of being tested on it. No, it means <laughs> they didn't read it at all. That's yeah. what that, I don't test them. Except, you know, if it says, you know, it's like, well, what year was I born? That's like the first sentence of the book. So maybe you could, <laughs> you could read the bio in the program to right. find out my bona fides, right. you know? And so, or you could really just Google me and that would be great. So people are on the phone every fucking second of their lives. I do that. Of course I do that all the time. I use those things. But then I try to remember the thing I looked up, which I can't. But at least I know how to pronounce elegiac. Is that how you pronounce it? <laughs> That's how I pronounce it. I don't it. use it because I don't know how to pronounce it. But that kind of thing, it's like, oh, I'm about to go to a glamorous dinner party and I'm sitting next to this person I've never heard of. Let me just look them up. And then I do. And, but a lot of people don't keep it for that long. So anyway, I, like, I'm Mark Morris. Hello, I'm here to run rehearsal. Oh. I do think, I mean, the book pretty eloquently describes the difference between running a company where everybody is your age, the way it was at the beginning, right. and then over the years changing so that you're now a little bit older than mm-hmm. them, and then their grandfather's age. I mean, that's a right. big transition. And if you're just continually doing your work, it might kind of be hard to notice that that transition has taken place. Right, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know, what's kind, of, what's kind of sexy and fabulous then becomes kind of like, oh, that's interesting, into like the most horrible crypt keeper kind of, <laughs> you know, it's like, ugh. I had a, a very good friend of mine who danced with my company. We did think, because she, she, as an, she was Italian, an Italian woman who lived with her mother and in a little apartment in Ostia. Right, that's where she grew up, and she slept with her mother oh, in, the in the same bed. bed. Yeah. yeah, I mean yeah. they weren't like lesbian lovers, as right. far as I know. <laughs> um, but our joke was we would mime when we'd say goodbye. This was a joke. She's she's ten years younger than I am, so she's really old now. But we used to do like a fake tongue kissing thing, and then we would say in English and Italian to each other, "Good night, Grandma." She was talking to me, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so that's kind of creepy, and that's what it turns into. When but, my friend but that Peter was Sellers, on purpose, obviously. Oh yeah, of yeah. course. Yeah. Peter Sellers, years and years ago, <laughs> long, long ago, watched me perform uh, with younger dancers in this piece called The Office, and he said, "Wow." you're the oldest thing I've ever seen. You know, something like that. Like, what are you doing? You're like the scary uncle. <laughs> Which was kind of great for the piece, because it's it a really was, cr- it scary was. dance. But it's like, oh, no, I don't want to be the scary psycho uncle nutcase. <laughs> I want to be like the sophisticated gentleman that I am and do the art that we do with these fabulous, fabulous dancers. So, so the only roles you've kept for yourself are essentially the scary uncle roles, like in Old Seville and uh, That's not a scary uncle, that's a drunk tourist. (laughs) Right, but he's I'm in the hard nut, but I'm not the old drunk guest, I'm now the father. Now you're the father. And that adds, it really adds something to the hard nut. Well, I'm a good actor. Who who in this room has seen the hard nut? 
and so it's his, you know, nutcracker. And uh, in the early days, he was various things: the Arabian princess, and you know, it's called the, the beautiful Arabian princess, the beautiful Arabian princess, and the, and the drunk guest, and various others. But having you be the paterfamilias in the in the party scene is really great. It, it adds something to the whole show, I think. Well, yeah. good because it's so exhausting. <laughs> I hope good. you're going to keep doing it. I though. am. I am. I am. Yeah. I am. I am. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it way longer than anybody wants me to. That's, I promise that. <laughs> That's your policy. That's right. <laughs> like, oh, still? <laughs> so we are going to open this up to audience questions at a certain point, and I have more things I can ask you, but um, start thinking about things that you might or like we to can ask. We can pepper it with audience questions, and you can have them in between if you Good want. Good idea. Yeah. So Especially if, if something's really awkward and embarrassing. Then I could hur hurry and ask something less awkward and embarrassing. Exactly. <laughs> so does anyone have a question now to launch this process of audience participation that Mark has spoken so eloquently against? <laughs> right. I love it. Wait. Anybody? No, there isn't anybody. No. All okay, right. thanks. We'll just keep talking, but at any point, we, we might ask you again. Are, are you afraid he's going to bite your head off? Because he's not. He's going to be really nice if you ask a question. Isn't he? <laughs> As I, I watched this film called Chinatown the other day. Have you yep. ever seen that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I hadn't seen it in about 30 years. And I remember it being kind of dry and golden and boring and horrifying. And everybody, all gay people anyway, remember, you know, they base their lives on Faye Dunaway, so. Anyway, um, so I'm watching this movie. It's also the best score imaginable. Huh. And I'm watching this movie, and I think it's right after the slapification scene. It's like, really horrific. And then he says something like, you know, uh, Mike Nichols said something like, you know, you wanted that, or this is your problem, or something like that. And she says, which I'm quoting here because I feel the same way, don't tell me how I feel. There. So you don't have to promise that I'm going to behave myself in a particular way. That's particularly... I, I can't promise not, anyway. Exactly. I can't carry through. <laughs> right. And I'm not puerile enough to say... Uh uh, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but I can slow things down. All you know, right. like, the, like the car rental at the airport. If um, they don't like you, they're yeah. like, oh, let me see if I have one for you over here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's in that hard. It's a great, great line. Don't tell me. And she's like, you know, freaking out. Yeah. What a great movie. It right. is a great movie. I haven't seen it in about twenty years. Though. Exactly. Yeah. Um, have you been to the new Pedro Almodovar yet? No. Well, that's I'm the end of that. I'm crying already, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, it was less of a tearjerker than some others have been, much less than All About My Mother, for instance, much less than the Pina Bausch one, whatever that was. Uh, talk to her. Yeah. yeah. The Pina Bausch one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Remember? She, it, there yeah. was some Pina Bausch in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's dead. Let's let her go. All right. <laughs> now, speaking of that, you're, you're choreographing dances, and this is in the book. Um, for after your demise. Is, is that a ghoulish thing to be doing? How did that come up? Well, you know, today is All Saints Day, isn't it? True. Yeah, today is All Saints Day. Yeah. Tomorrow's All Souls Day, mm -hmm. um, which was a good night, for, good night for people to go see my Orfeo and Eurydice, my Orfeo and Eurydice at the Met because it's all dead people, a hundred dead people <laughs> in the chorus. It's so <laughs> fabulous. Um, let's see. Well, yeah. Well, whenever I, I'm, I'm making, I'm working on a second official dance right now. I'm working all the time on things. I have one that's in the can, as we would say, if we were pretentious filmmakers, <laughs> and uh, another one that's. Uh, under construction, and these are dances that are to be premiered after I can't quite, if I'm like fully vegetable or dead. Um, my preference is dead, just in case you're Me wondering. Too. Okay, Me too. if I forget, if Let's I'm supposed to blink, to <laughs> do I blink once or twice? Yes, or, wait, oh wait, let me start over. Um, so <laughs> anyway, I have these done, and they're, it's called Dances for the Future, right? Yeah, which I sort of identify with the honeymooners, when they do the commercial uh, for the chef of the future. Anybody remember that? Mm -mm. No, if they get on a commercial and then he freezes up and can't talk. But it's a kitchen device that will do everything. Can it core a apple? <laughs> yes, it can core a apple. So it's this device that does everything and they can't sell it because it's bad. Okay, so anyway, so that's why they're called Dances for the Future because I don't know if they're going to be great or not. There's, I never know that with any dance. So what I'm doing is choreographing dances 
privately in my studio in Brooklyn with my company just the way I would any other dance that's going to open in a couple of months or a year. And so I choreograph it. The music is set. It's all done. I cast it. I try it with different people dancing. Design, it's been being notated in every medium we know now and some that are to come. Um, so it's notated, designed, lighting, costumes, everything. Choreographed, set out. Sorry. And those are to be released as needed, posthumously, so that we don't just have to go see tired old L'Allegro, Il Penzeroso, Ed Il Moderato, or the other way, whatever it's called. Um, the great masterworks of my history, it's like at a certain point, you know, even the rare book room gets a little bit dusty, if you know what I'm saying. So, you know, Paul Taylor's Esplanade, you know, has just turned into pablum. <laughs> and it was great, and then it wasn't. Mm. So. And, you know, he lived a very long time and made up some very good dances. So I want to be able to drop some into the dance market as time goes on. And how do you know which ones you can bear not to see in your own lifetime? I mean, how, how do you decide this one can go in the can? Well, there's some I don't want to see in my lifetime already. <laughs> <laughs> but they're popular with dancers or audiences or whatever. You know, really, it's like, okay, I, that one, I don't really need to see that all you the time You don't want to mention anymore. any of these? No, not really, because yeah. it changes. It's yeah. also like, I thought I hated it, but then we bring it back because it seems, you know, it's a, a you know, musical theme or dancers that I want to do a particular yeah, with thing. with different it's people dancing, yeah, it changes. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so that kind of oral tradition, passing the dances down, which always happens is the best way of transmitting this sort of physical performance, mm. um, including you know I, I don't even I can't even really watch videotape it doesn't register with me I can't tell right and it's like uh, so they can all learn that instantly on their phones you know, their <laughs> watches They're like oh, okay I've got that and um, but I can't do it I just watch it to settle an argument because yeah. I remember everything once it's put together so a dance from 20 years ago we can put together from tape and from other dancers, and then I watch it, it's like, oh right, I wouldn't have done that, and I can tell. And so I do very little revision. If I don't like a dance, I drop it. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's by as needed, as needed. Um, are you sick of your greatest dances? I mean, are you tired of L'Allegro? Are you tired of Hard Nut or uh, Dido and Aeneas? These ones that everybody uses as the touchstones of the great career. I'm tired of them being the touchstones of a great career. <laughs> and I'm also just tired. You know, I get tired. I'm 63. I know that's nothing. Nothing. Nothing compared to some people who could be or not, not in the room. a million miles away. Yeah, I don't know where they are, but some people are older than I am. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, let me see some ID, sir. Yeah. <laughs> for the discount. For the discount. Um, no, I go to dinner early now. Which really? is just you've never gone to dinner. No, because I go after a show, yeah. and now it's like I just fall asleep if yeah. I do that. So um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I lost the question. Um, it's all right. You answered it. Okay. <laughs> Another right. question, anyone? What? Here's Lively someone, here's someone with a question. Oh yes. Oh, oh, we need to give him. Oh, why are you recording this? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. That's why I have to use a microphone. Sorry. Don't do this. <laughs> is this on? <laughs> I promise not to. So the as-needed works, um, it made me think about um, music artists who pass, and then all of a sudden you're getting volumes of... Prince. Right, Michael Jackson. You Michael. Know, yes, you're getting a, you know, volumes of work. And so I think it's kind of not just clever, but really wise, because essentially, why shouldn't the dances live on? Um, because the artistry will live on um, past your time here. Are you thinking about the generations, even though we keep getting y younger, well, not so much myself, but <laughs> we keep getting younger than you, are you thinking about the generations of dancers who will come that you won't have had a, an interaction with, that being able to have sort of an impact and influence on them? Is that something that's important to you? Well, that's a couple of things. One is dancers, like every other f living creature, Maybe I don't know if it's evolution, but they certainly change as time goes by. Part of it is the pathetic but valuable trickle down from sports medicine to physical therapy for dancers, so they can dance longer with fewer injuries. That doesn't necessarily, you know, just because you are 50 
and can still dance doesn't mean I want to watch you, you know? I mean, it's better if you were, like, really good when you were 20 and now you're super good now that you're 50 instead of, why can't I do that? It's like, well, <laughs> watch the tape. Um, but... <clears throat> So dancers have changed, people who dance, who learn pieces of mind that are 30 years old and the dancers are 25 years old. It's like, oh, okay, there's a different experience, different training, different approaches, different ideas about who's boss and how to collaborate and the way people treat each other and how you dance, like technically how you do it. It's like, oh no, and I found a lot of young people as I get older that I find young people surprisingly conservative. It's like, no, we don't do this. You know, you know what would my professor say? It's like, who's your professor? You know, uh, you, you now have a job with me. So what you learned at Purchase, you were taught by people who danced with, for me, and you learned, you had a, like an hour of dance history where you learned about Mark Morris's work. You know, you watched a five-minute YouTube thing. It's like, oh, I know all of it. It's like, no, you don't know anything, which is fine. I prefer people don't know anything, and then they come in and learn what we do. But that's also, uh, so that all, you know, people do my dances today, and it's a completely different model of person doing exactly the same text as a dance from long ago. So my old-timey dancers, some even are older than I am. And they come and watch the show and it's divided in half between like, oh, these young people, this, you know, <laughs> we were, had such, such je ne sais quoi, we had such esprit de corps, we had such grit and such gravity and we really meant it, implying that young people are just vapid morons. <laughs> so then they, they do the dance great. And so then the other half of the people are like, oh my God, we were just staggering around <laughs> and had no, like, look at that, they're doing all this shit that we couldn't do. And so I'm, it's like, what do I do? I have one of them and one of them. It's like, oh, and a dancer who's like, huh? <laughs> so it's fascinating to me. So I can't imagine what people are gonna dance like in the future. I used to say that in L'Allegro, cause I'm, I'm kind of hard on dance notation, I don't think a lot of it works very well. Pace, Pace, Center for Ballet and the Arts. Mm. But, um, you know, Laba notation is a very interesting thing, mostly to improve the efficiency of factory workers. So um, it's a very interesting thing, and I, and I use that. But I always thought that L'Allegro, my signature whatever dance, I... Uh, facetiously would say that when it comes back in 200 years, thanks to the work of these diligent reconstructing dance historian types, um, it'll be done with like uh, space food sticks and jet packs. <laughs> You know, which is, so I'm saying the futurism from like the 50s. Yeah, exactly, the past I'm not seeing a, a hologram of Nat King <laughs> yeah. Cole, you know? So who knows? Yeah. The other thing is these dances that come out, are you doing like a secret meeting or something? Oh, you can just go like, <laughs> um, yeah, okay, we'll be done. We'll be fine. Um, well, yeah, that's right. Just do that, just like over. Um, what was I going to say? One more thing. What was it? I can't think of it. Let's see? Yeah, what? You said the you were talking about. Oh, yes, the future of that. But the other thing is, people who are in these dances, I'm watching the, the ones for the future. I hope none of them are around to do it because I wanted to make up like 75 dances in the next 30 years. That's unlikely. So the good part of that is I'll never see them. And you so won't have to worry about How the hell they're going to dance. Like, good <laughs> luck. I'm gone. <laughs> but then for that, you shouldn't have to worry about old warmed over versions of L'Allegro either. Right. None of it will matter. Oh, I won't. Yeah. A question. I'll just ask this since there weren't any other questions. Are there any um, questions you have for the audience? <laughs> huh. Anything you'd like to know that the audience might be thinking? <laughs> Not really. I've never heard that question That's from great. an audience member Here's before. Here's my question. <laughs> Wither dance. <laughs> 
My question, my question is, <laughs> do you go to dance shows? Are you book types? Or is there a thing as both of those things? Like I sort of think I am. I read. I watch dances. I mostly go to music. My favorite thing to do is to go to music shows, listen to music, read music, think about music. And of course, Mariska Hargitay. But <laughs> I just want to, you know, like, New York, and it's easy to live in New York and either be completely alone and reading like crazy, or you never get home because you're at every gallery and every, you know, or you're just on the sub, trapped on the subway and it like Trader Joe's and the line or, you know, it's so exhausting. Um, and, you know, it's a great place to be. I li- I've been here for 40 years. And of course, like everybody else, it's not like it used to be. And like everybody else, I wouldn't move here if I was moving here now. It's like, get away from me. I'll, you know, get off of my, get out of my yard. So that's the thing. It's like, is everybody like, are most people involved and interested? You just hide in your apartment all the time, which is perfectly valid. That's what you're asking the yeah, audience. Yeah, I'm asking the audience. Do you go to shows? Yeah, okay. All right, just checking. <laughs> Do you mean my op- anybody doing my Opry? Okay, all right, just checking. Yeah, right. I heard you were at this great Bunraku show the other night. It's the short. Sudamoto. The opera is short. <laughs> There's no intermission. That's a good... good. The Bunraku show yeah. was one of the great shows of my life. That, I, other people who went to it said it was pretty great, too. Well, they were wrong. <laughs> it was uh, astonishing. Huh. This uh, Sugi, That fabulous Sugimoto visual artist who staged this whole thing. It was an unbelievable show at uh, White Light. The, the sh- White Light. And Oh, it was li- White Light. It was That's White right. Light. Yeah. yeah, right. What was the venue? Where was it held? The Rose. Uh-huh. Good. There yes. <laughs> you. Let's get a mic to her. <laughs> so I, I only see your dance shows. I don't go to any other dance. Smart. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I have to say I don't know much about dance. But um, I'm curious you know about your... everything you need to know about dance. Yeah. <laughs> don't get right? your hopes up. Okay, okay, sorry. That's good to know. Um, I'm curious. You obviously love music so much. Do you have a similar interest in the visual, uh, you know, the Met, the museums, visual arts. I'm curious about how that informs your art. Yes, I do. Um, where was it? I did it I, occasionally because I'm whatever I am, like a C-list celeb- glamorous celebrity. I occasionally am asked to do things that I love related to my job or not. Like I'll, I'll curate uh, a radio show. Like, here, listen to this music. I love this. Listen to this. Don't ask any questions. I, wa- I sometimes am asked to take people through museums. Do you say musea? I don't. Good. <laughs> I am now, from now on. Um, through museums. And there was one I took. Where was that? that um, was it the Clark, right? They asked me to walk some select people. It was like a day with me or, you know, walking through the museum. And so, of course, all the guards and are, are there standing around. And I took a group of people, and it was all these dirty, dirty nudes that hadn't been hidden uh, from in Spain, right? The Prado. Like, it was called something like the dirtiest, nudie, pornographic pictures from Spain. That was the name of the show. Um, something like that. But... <laughs> I was just saying, you know, it's like, I'll talk about the pictures you want. It's like, oh, I, this seems like, and they think because I'm a dancer, I'm going to say like, well, as yes, you can see, they're, they're, you know, they're long, you know, they're twisted and the contrapostos represent the t- twisted. You see the full torso and the pawn, she's reaching this way. You know, it's like, and I just say, you know, I like this. This looks as interesting. You know, I'm, I'm not, I mean it, but I'm not analyzing. I'm not an art historian or whatever. And uh, someone overheard one of the docents or guards or something. It's like, he doesn't know a thing about art. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I know that's why I'm here. That's why. That's why I wrote this book with Wes because he doesn't know. F- what's the word in, in English? Bookcase. Fuck all. Yeah, right. No, that's Yiddish. I meant yeah. English. He doesn't know fuck all about dance. Now that's changed a little bit. But um, yeah, visual arts indeed. I have a lot of crazy painter friends, and I'm I'm very much attracted to that. Um, and I like a lot of people. Well, I do like I like a lot of people, but I like a lot of people. <laughs> I'm a member of several museums that I almost never go to. I mean, I don't just go to the gift shop, but that, which is nice, but that's very often all you need. So, um, yes, I am. I'm a snob. I'm, I'm a snob without a cause a little bit. I know, <laughs> I know what I like, that horrible thing that people say. And, you know, I've had very long long-term relationships, very good friends with a number of visual artists and composers and musicians. And so it's just that really the dance world is very, very petite. And the world of music is quite vast. And the world of 
uh, visual art is, has a lot of zeros after it. That's how I see a lot of this. Sorry. Sorry, visual artists. Mm. Any other choreographers in the room? You <laughs> are? Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> Question? Uh -huh. Another choreographer. Where? <laughs> oh, hello. Here's what my grandfather used to say to me when I started makeup dance. He says, hey, Mark. Why don't you choreog a little bit for us? <laughs> not in book, that's not good. in. Isn't yeah, that good? Why don't you just choreog I a little know. bit? All this gold that was not put in here. Well, it's a sequel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what might have been? Anybody else? Yes. Hi. So you just mentioned being a New Yorker by adoption, like many of us are. But you've, you've made New York in many ways through your culture. But what if? How has New York made you? I mean, if, could you have been you and done what you've done somewhere else? That's impossible to imagine. Well, have a go. I served some, <laughs> I served some time in Brussels. For three and a half years I was in Brussels, and it was magic and miraculous and not always particularly comfortable or fun. But it was hugely, hugely important. And I, I've always traveled a lot, but that's one thing, you know, if, especially I live in New York, and I'm dying to get out of here because it's a nightmare, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> then I'm on the road doing my job. We're on the road sometimes, some years, about half the year. We're out traveling. A lot of that is in airports. And so then I'm somewhere for a while, and then I'm dying to get back to New York. It's like, oh, God, I miss that. And then you come back, it's like, oh, my God, the men are so gorgeous in New York. <laughs> and that's true. You go away and come back. It's like everybody gets better looking the more you go away. Um, and so, yeah, you know, years ago also my sister in a very sad sort of plaintive voice uh, said to me, Mark, you're, you're so New York now. Like, it was like she Maureen, was... Maureen? Maureen, yeah. yeah. She was heartbroken because I was really, really impatient, and I said that I stood online instead of in line, and, you know, we had uh, best foods instead of Hellman's. Um, so all of this stuff was just like... I was speaking of, you know, I have an accent now, apparently. Everybody who hears me talk thinks I'm from somewhere besides where we are at that moment, including Seattle and New York. It's like, where do you come? Because I overpronounce a lot of things, in case you're wondering. And you know, it's like FM radio, when everybody's taught, you know, it's like, oh, and here's, you know, Prokofiev. <laughs> it's like, oh, huh? I just talk like that all the time. It's sad, but it's true. And it's fun for me. It drives some people crazy. Like, uh, never mind. Um, <laughs> Okay. So yeah, no, I, I don't know. New York is great. Everybody knows that. And it's also a great place to just stay at home. Your apartment looks out on the Empire State Building. It I think does. that's very New York. Yeah. It does. It looks on the Empire State Building, yeah. which a six-year-old friend of mine refers to as the, referred to as the entire State Building. Because <laughs> it's so big, I guess. Yep. Okay, so and we have time for one last question. Okay, make it a really long one. <laughs> well, I, just hearing you talk about all this, it makes me wonder what you're most nostalgic for. Sorry. Well, I and I mean, I only say that because you're uh, you are such a part of what I am nostalgic for. Um, I came here. I, I moved here from San Francisco in '94 as a college student. And I was so broke and I couldn't afford to see dance, and so I ushered for dancers responding to AIDS, and that was how I saw a lot of stuff. And um, so, as you're talking about everything tonight, I just I'm thinking back to that very specific time, and it just made me wonder about any specific times that you sort of long well, for in that way. That's kind of a loaded thing, dancers responding to AIDS, because of course, at a certain point, in the 80s in particular, the audience was decimated. This, um, I actually, I'm, this is a terrible joke, but I recall, because I'm older than I was, I, I very often refer to DRA as dancers responding to age. Sure. It's like, oh, sorry. Um, but with that, um, that was Fran Lebowitz in that film. What was that movie? You know, that one solo movie of Fran Lebowitz. I never saw it. Oh, well, she's a genius, and it's really great. But she broke my heart explaining that 
the, it's different going to the opera now. That the, that the people she went to the opera with were what I would call from my generation just barely opera queens. And I'm one of those, proudly. So suddenly there weren't the clacks, the gay, like crazy gay fans throwing bouquets and explaining the fights and, you know, the, you know that's still represented by that great website, uh, great, uh, what do you call that? Website called Parterre Box which is genius. So that's still this kind of fabulous, bitchy, knows everything, completely brilliant reviews, critiques, comments about opera. But she said she'd, look, she'd go to the Met and look around and the people she was used to going uh, to the opera with weren't there. So it wasn't, she wasn't talking about the Keith Herrings or you know the, the famous people who died of AIDS or related to that, but it was the people who went there and were fascinated and interested and loved that culture, that aspect of the culture, not just in New York, it's a fully international thing. But that was, so I guess I'm nostalgic for that in the way that I sort of paraphrased Fran Leibowitz. But it was a good question because she seems to also be asking which of your works was nostalgic. Do you think any oh, of really? your dances? I didn't get that. Is that, did you ask? I, I really just, that's open-ended. I really yeah. just, it's open end. That's my favorite kind of question. I can go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted it to be like my arabesque that used to be so beautiful, or my f- my beautiful flowing locks, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I don't spend a lot of time down memory lane, if you know what I'm saying. Great. Thank you all for being here. And now you can have your book signed. <laughs> Thank you.